Uh, okay, so section 9.1, solve quadratic equation using square root properties. First, um, I want to remind you about the quadratic equation. It has the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a cannot be zero, right? Otherwise, it won't be quadratic anymore. b, c are real number. Um, now, we're going to solve the quadratic equation using the factoring method. We did this before. Um, this is just review. So for example, if I want to factor x squared plus 5x plus 6, well, you know how to factor this, right? So it's going to be x, five, two numbers multiply, give you 6, and add, add to 5, 2 and 3, right? So x plus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. Well, two numbers multiply is equal to zero. So that means either one of them or both of them is equal to zero, right? So either x plus two equals zero or x plus three equals zero. If and only if x equal negative two or x equal negative three. Right? And then you can check your answer by uh, plugging negative two and negative three back in your the equation, right? Well, I'm not gonna do that. Um, it is checked. How about this one? Um, 2y squared plus 7y plus three equals zero. So again, I want you to find me two numbers. I'm gonna do guess and check instead of doing the um, AC method, okay? So let's see, 2y squared, well, the only, the, the only one possibility that I can have is either I have two y and one y. That's two y times one y or y is two y squared. And then the three, the three is, uh, well, again, the only one possibility, one times three is three, right? There's no other possibility. So I'm gonna put a three here and I'm gonna put a one here. Now, it's called guess and check. Some people can put a three here and then one here. And then, and then you 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 check it, see if it um, correct. Okay, so we're gonna be plus and plus because they all plus here. The first two terms, I'm okay. I got two y squared, and then I got three, so I'm okay. I want to check the middle term. To check the middle term, you're gonna check the inner and the outer. Remember foil or f o i l, right? Um, so inner. O is outer, I is inner. So just check the inner first. Inner is Y, one Y. And the outer is six Y. Add up together is seven Y. So yes, so that must be correct. And again, two numbers multiply is equal to zero. This imply either two Y plus one equals zero or Y plus three equals zero. If only if, what? Well, subtract one divided by two, so y equal negative one half, or y equal negative three. And again, if you uh, plug in your answer, it should check, okay? Example, example number three, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the nine to the left, so I'm gonna subtract nine. Subtract nine, subtract nine both side. On the right hand side, that's gone. Okay. So I have a square minus nine equal zero. Can you factor a square minus nine? A square minus nine is the same thing as a square minus three square. Or a plus three times a minus three equals zero. And again, this imply what? Either a plus three equals zero, to the left a little bit, or a minus three equals zero. Right? If and only if a equal three or negative three or a equal positive three. So you got two solutions. It makes sense, right? It's quadratic equation. It's um the the degree is two, so you should have two solutions.
Now, so that's solving quadratic equation using the factoring method. Um, like now, what if I want to solve a quadratic equation? What if I have a special quadratic, uh, quadratic equation that allow me to use square root property to solve? Right? So let me uh, remind you something. If, I, if x squared equal k, then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of k. Why? Because you can check it back, right? You can check it back. If you square, if you square the k, the positive, uh, positive, positive square root of k, you square that is let me write neatly. So here I have x equal either positive square root of k or x equal negative square root of k. And why why do we have two cases like this? Because if you square it, let's check. If you square this. What do you have? Well, the first one x squared is x squared. And then the square root of k squared is k. What about the, the bottom one? x squared is x squared. So square root of negative, of negative square root of k squared. Well, because the parentheses is wrapped around that negative, so that negative is also being squared, right? So that's this right here is the same thing as negative one times the square root of k. If you distribute that power of two into negative one, negative one parentheses square is one, and then square of k squared is k, so positive k. So when you take a square root of something, both sides, um, if it is a variable, then you have to add plus and minus in front of it, okay? Now recall this is the um, standard form of or the general form of quadratic equation, a, a x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now, what if the, the coefficient of a is equal to zero? What if this guy right here is equal to, I'm sorry, equal to one, even if it equals zero is not quadratic in the first place. If this one is equal to one, then it's just x squared, right? And furthermore, if the term bx is gone, then all I have is, at the end, all I have is what? x squared plus c equals zero, right? So what I can do is what? I can move the c to the right. So if I subtract c, subtract c both sides, that's gone. Now I have x squared equal negative c, and that's okay x squared, you can argue with me, we cannot, some, some, if you square a number, it cannot be negative. It used to be, right? But now, because we know the complex number, it can be negative. Remember, i squared is equal to negative one, right? So, so if I take the square root both sides, because I want to solve for x, square root, square root, and remember when you take square root, you add plus and minus. Right? So square root of x squared is x. Um, and plus minus the square root of negative c. c is arbitrary number, so I'm not gonna simplify any further, okay? You say, okay, that's i, but what if c is negative? Then a negative time negative will become positive, right? So I'm just gonna stop it right here. But the point is, that's the gist, right? You isolate the quadratic term. Um, that means the quadratic term is this one right here, that's quadratic term, you isolate it by what by moving the constant to the right right and make the coefficient and make sure the coefficient is one the coefficient of one x squared is one and then the second step is you're going to use square root properties which is you take square root both sides make sure you add plus and minus and then you simplify the radical um, if need be okay so let's take a look at the example let's go back to the example up here where we um, solve the quadratic equation using factoring method. Um, now, because I don't have the, whenever you don't have a middle term, you don't have that bx term, um, your best bet is your square root property because it's easy and it's quick, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take square root both sides since the quadratic term is already isolated, right? In front of uh, a squared is one, so I'm good. 
and then the constant is to the right. So I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. Don't forget, don't forget add plus minus. Well, a square is a square, a square root of a square is a. So square root of nine is three. So plus minus three. And that'll be your answer. You're done. Just like we have the answer here. See how fast it is? Example number two. Uh, example number two, we need to isolate the quadratic term. So first I'm gonna move the nine to the right. So subtract nine, both sides. That's gone. So I have three X squared equal negative nine. We need to isolate all the way to the stud, right? So we're gonna divide both sides by three because we need coefficient of X squared to be one. So I have X squared equal negative three. And now we take square root both sides, add plus and minus. On the left-hand side, just X. On the right-hand side, I have plus minus square root of negative three. Well, whenever you see a negative under a square root, is automatically turned to i, right? So it's gonna be plus minus i times square root of three. And that'll be your answer, which just makes sense. You have two answers, right? You have two answers. Oh, by the way, let me make a little note here. Let me make a little note. Maybe I'll use purple. More remark. Quadratic equation always have two solutions because the, the, the largest degree is two. All right, um, I would suggest you pause my video a little bit and then try to do number three on your own. So first we need to isolate the x squared term, right? So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a both side. Gone. So I have three x squared equal positive a, divide both side by three. That's gone. I have x squared equal a over three. Pick square root both side, don't forget plus and minus. So I got x equal, let's keep it red. I got x equal plus minus square root of a over three. Uh, I can split it apart, right? We write plus and minus. So I can, I, I'm gonna write as square root of a divided by square root of three. You can factor the square root of a, you can simplify it a little bit more. Do mm, like this. So square root of a, I can rewrite it as square root of four times two, or times square root of two, do like that, which is two square root of two. Okay. So this is plus and minus two square root of two over three. Okay. okay. All right, a few more example, um, three more, and then we're done with the section 9.1. <laughs> Okay, um, so same thing, right? <clears throat> First, I'm going to isolate the, the negative two. So I'm gonna add two. Don't bother to, to, um, to expand x minus one squared. I would not do that. It's not wrong, but I wouldn't do it, right? It just makes the problem longer. And the point being here is that we try to solve the quadratic equation using um, square root properties. So that's gone. Now I have x minus one square equal seven. Again, your goal is you wanna solve for x. So my next step will be take the square root both sides, add plus and minus. I always add plus and minus um, on the number size. It's not wrong if you add plus and minus here, but it make it more complicated, right? So, so I'll just add it to the, the number size. 
Okay, on the on the right hand on the left hand side, so square root of x minus one square. Well, the square and the square root cancel, so that's just x minus one. Okay. On the right hand side, nothing I can do. Rewrite that square root of seven. Add one both side. That's gone. So the x equal what one plus minus the square root of seven. I hope nobody adding the one into the seven. Those are not like term. Okay, so write them separately. Again, we have two solution there, right? One is one plus seven, uh, root seven. The other one is one minus root seven. Number five, uh, number five. I would, well, we have the middle term here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 50 to the left. So I'm going to subtract 50 like that. So now I have V squared plus 18V um, plus 31 equals zero. Can you factor? I don't think we can factor it. Actually, um, let me take it back. I don't want to do that. I don't want to move everything to the left um, because I won't be able to factor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the left-hand side first so that I can use the square root property. So let's factor the left-hand side first. Give me two number, multiply, give you 81, add up to 18. Nine, nine, right? So V plus nine, V plus nine. Well, V plus nine times V plus nine is V plus nine. All of that square equal 50. And now you guess it, we're gonna take square root both sides. Okay. Uh, on the left-hand side, V plus nine. On the right-hand side, um, so square root of 50, This one, so plus minus here, so I don't forget. So where 50, you can rewrite it as so square root of 25 times two, square root of two, right? So that five root two. I do expect you to simplify your answer though, okay? Uh, now you subtract nine. So V equal negative nine plus and minus five times root two. Mm -hmm. uh, pause the video and then do the number six on your own. It's very much similar to number five. Okay, so don't, don't subtract the 27. We're going to factor the left-hand side first. Two number multiply give you 16 and add up to eight. Four and four, All right? So n plus four times n plus four equal 27. n plus four times n plus four is n plus four square. Take square root both side. On the left hand side, just n plus four. On the right hand side, plus minus so square root of 27. So square root of 27, you can rewrite it as so square root of nine times three, right? Which is what? Square root three like that, which is three root three. So plus minus three root three, subtract four. So I have X equal, I'm sorry, N equal, negative four plus minus three root three. That'll be conclude your um, section 9.1. Thank you.